Kilimanjaro's is putting on a trek up Africa's second highest mountain and we still have some places left for you to join us. You'll spend a week trekking up the beautiful Mount Kenya and you'll also get to spend two nights on Olpegeta Conservancy and see how your trek will actually be making a difference on the ground to make a better future for riders. rhinos.org to find all the details of our trek and how you can sign up. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.
Hello and welcome everybody to the latest Helping Rhinos live broadcast, uh, part of our Rapid Response for Rhinos series. Uh, I'm pleased that this time we are going to be going live to Olpegeta very soon uh, and something a little bit different to what we've done in the past. Um, it's probably unlikely you're going to see any rhinos today, which is uh, very unusual for one of our live broadcasts. But today we're focusing on um, and something that is very important uh, for the protection of the rhinos, and that is the anti-poaching patrol or dog patrol unit uh, based at Oropegeta. And you, we, we, offer, uh, we, we offer you the chance to adopt uh, these anti-poaching dogs, and therefore we wanted to give people the opportunity to meet them uh, as close to in person as you can do, uh, and also to give a little demonstration of the type of work that the dogs do uh, and perhaps most excitingly to introduce you to the most recent addition to the old Pegeta anti-poaching dog unit, uh, a Springer Spaniel called Drum. Uh, and what we're going to do is just show you a little film now of Drum in action. Uh, and from there, we're going to go um, live to the plains of old Pegeta and uh, my good friend, James Mwenda, uh, and he's with the anti-poaching patrol unit. And then we will show you the demonstration um, live, fingers crossed, internet permitting, uh, and also then meet some of the other dogs and, and have a, a question and answer session with their dog handlers. So uh, without further ado, let me, uh, let me show you uh, and introduce you to Drum. So there, uh, there was uh, a little introduction to drum uh, and a little bit of drum in action, uh, and also some of the other dogs uh, that's in the uh, the old Pegeta anti poaching unit, uh, Diego, Scarf, and Otis, uh, and we will hopefully get to, to see something of them a, a little bit later on. Um, but first, 
let me uh, let me hand over now, or, or let's have a chat first of all to uh, to James, who is, uh, as I said, with the with the dog units uh, in live in in Old Pejeter. So, uh, James, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Simon, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Very good, James. Um, now you'll notice that we just said in the film that we would be going live to the kennels of Old Pejeter, and you'll notice that there's no kennels in sight uh, where you can see James, and and there's a good reason for that, uh, and that is because uh, there was a tremendous rainstorm earlier, and we just felt that it wasn't really the best location after that to to show you. So um, I have to say, I think even better, we uh, we are going to join James up on the plains of Old Pejeter. Uh, where um, I, so the dogs are, are with him, but firstly, James is just going to talk to us a little bit around the um, uh, a little bit more around the dog unit and the role that the dog unit plays within the, the sort of wider anti poaching uh, operation within our Pejeter. So, James, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Simon. We really appreciate for this uh, good and chance to showcase some of our very uh, important individuals in terms of helping protect our environment. Uh, for those maybe who don't know where our Pejeta is, our Pejeta Conservancy is a 90,000 acre piece of land where we primarily target to conserve endangered species uh, and make sure that we continue protecting the entire ecosystem that is here. Uh, we all know that uh, we are the largest black rhino sanctuary in Eastern Central Africa. We have over 130 black rhinos and over 30 southern white rhinos. And of course, we are the home to the last two northern white rhinos. Uh, for the last one and a half years, Opegeta has not had any poaching incident, and that is because of the continued effort and collaboration from you, our partners, like helping rhinos, to our supporters who have been supporting us all through, but most importantly, the rangers who have committed their lives to the well-being of these animals and making sure that uh, we continue protecting these animals from uh, the verge of going to extinction. Uh, just to mention, uh, because we work as a team, it takes a team to achieve such a conservation success. And that is why, in bearing in mind that uh, on Wednesday was, uh, on Thursday was the World International Wild Dog Day, uh, it is a very good chance for us to show uh, the dog unit that we have in Operator Conservancy. Uh, we will all understand that dogs have played a very uh, instrumental role, especially in the recent past. Uh, in terms of combating uh, wildlife, uh, apprehension of poachers, as well as in scientific research because of their good sense of smelling. You know, they can be able to see what people can see. They can be able to smell sometimes what people can smell. And they can be able to search even in areas where uh, humans can be able to search. We have seen them being used uh, for analysis and they can be able to identify even the smallest of the scat of the most uh, minute animals. So it's really a golden chance for us to show um, all the dogs that we have in our Pejeta Conservancy. I am joined here by John Tekeles. John Tekeles is the um, uh, head uh, people of the dog unit, and he will be taking us through uh, the dogs. He will be introducing all the dogs to us, and in that regard, we'll be able to see the role that these dogs are playing uh, in our Pejeta Conservancy. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Tekeles. I'm the head of anti poaching uh, canine unit. Yeah, you know, you have seven dogs, and the role of this dog is uh, you have um, tracking dogs, touch dogs, and uh, attack dogs. Um, the aim of having this unit is to support anti poaching units. Also, work together with the Kenya government, especially the Kenya police, the Kenya Wildlife Service. And also, we work together. Uh, we support our neighboring communities. If anything happens, we have a team. And also, we have a quick response team 24 uh, 7 within the conservation. We make sure our project is safe and also our community is safe. So I'll introduce you to um, my team of the of canine unit, of the dogs and the, the men who are the dogs. And also we, we do two, uh, two demos. I will show you a splash demo and a attack demo. I think, I think we'll enjoy. You're most welcome. Uh, this Otis. Otis is a uh, Otis is a tracking dog. He's now four years old. Uh, male. 
Oscar, Oscar is still apart. Now we're heading to two years. It's also a tracking dog. At this, there's a brother hound. You see? He's now three years old. Also, he's a tracker dog. The big boy here, his name is Diego. Diego now is seven years old. He's the most is the oldest dog that we have here. And also Diego is very much intelligent dog because he can do three rolls. He can do stash, attack, and uh, attacking. Malaika. Malaika is two, two years old now. Still a pup. But he is attacking dog. Pup. Pup is the mom of Malaika and Oscar. He's four years now old. Also, he's a attacking dog. And you have here a uh, spring spaniel. Name is Ram. So another dog we have a um, um, we'll show you on a, a, a demo with him. He's of searching of weapons and ammunition, and he's doing good. So first I will we'll start with, with the drum. We show you how he do his activities, and after drum we we'll go to Diego for that activity. I think you'll enjoy. Uh, Simon, I hope you still can get us. Hello, Simon? Yes, James. Yes, we can still hear you. That was very interesting. Thank you to um, to you and to, to John for the introduction. It was nice to, to see all of the dogs there. Um, what is next, James? Is, is, are we moving to the demonstration now? Yes. Uh, you uh, just uh, confirmed that you are going to do the first demo using drum. He will showcase the role that a drum plays, and uh, we will do a demo. Uh, and we'll be able to follow him uh, do the search. Okay, so um, I will I will hand back over to you uh, and leave you to 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 let us see what what Drun does. Right. So they are preparing him, as you can see. He's very he is a very active uh, dog, as you can see. So um, we have hidden an ammunition somewhere where that's the direction that we are heading. So Drum now is doing the search. Um, and we'll be able to see. Can you explain to us what you're doing now? So now um, I have um, Drum here. I will put him in the harness. When the dog have a harness, in, you know in ready to work. Well, put in the harness and you leave him off in this here because we, have, uh, we, have, we are here in uh, open ground. Uh, we search, use him for searching in the open ground and also we can use him for searching of vehicles, houses. But now here we can show you how we search in the ground. So we'll be on off leash. But once we search something like a vehicle or a house, we put it on, on, on leash. But here we take him on off leash. So I put the harness on. Boy. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
find a good ball. Oh. So, John, does that mean that he's found? Yeah. Oh, you have a magazine here? A G3 magazine? Oh, you had it for him today. And he's huh? found, found it. Once a dog come and the magazine, you'll see him come and sit here. And now you find a magazine. And we shall have a Congo ball we give to him as a reward. Come on, drum! So Johnny said a drum can only do such. It's boring. So James and James and John, what is that the drum is what is he having now in his in his mouth? What is what is John giving him to chase? Uh, I give him a Kong ball. Like a, a, a Kong ball you reward. Because we don't want him to touch a magazine or, or a gun because sometimes he can get a gun is is full loaded and ready to but so once you get a gun or a magazine, you give him a Kong a Kong ball to play. So it's a bit of a treat for him really then in terms of um you know, a reward for, for doing his job well. Yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, a treat for him. Because um, here we, we give dogs uh, different treats. Um, attacking dogs, we use a piece of sausage. And uh, attack a dog when attack a hand sleeve, it's a reward for him. And a drum, we give him um, a, a congo ball as a treat. John, you said that uh, drum can only do such, yeah? Yeah, dr drum, drum is just, you can do such. It looks like he's enjoying the treats, John. Yeah, he's enjoying the treats. Um, a couple of questions have come in, John. We, I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of rain, um, heavy rain earlier. Does, does the rain make it more difficult for the dogs to track? No, no. Rain cannot do anything with the dogs for tracking. Maybe tracking dogs when the rain is big, more big rain, it become a problem. But just a small rain is good. Okay, that, I mean, that, and sometimes, good. sorry, and sometimes when the ground is uh, is wet, it make the the scent to be more strong, so it be more easier for the dog to to track. Come on. Okay. <laughs> What, what about John? Um, you know, how often do, do you, so obviously you have to train obviously all the dogs and, and drum to, to do this and they have to go through these sort of demonstrations so you can, you know, keep them in, in good shape. But how often do you need to, how often do you actually go through the process of having to do this for real, if, if you like? So you get reports of weapons that you have to take the dogs out. 
Um, we shall take a dog um, every morning. First, we, we introduce the dog to handlers and they do some activities with dogs, um, like grooming, inspection, and make sure that dog was good to, to work. And uh, I think every day we have a team to work with the dogs, and uh, we have a team and uh, dog handlers to work together to make the dogs is, uh, are good. So every every day once, um, and we give them once a week uh, to to a day for rest. So six days a week, the the dogs are working. If you don't have any incidents, but if you have you have more incidents, you send the, uh, the dogs. But here and now, I think we shall have more um, incidents within our cars, within the, our communities, and uh, we take the dogs outside the conservation to support our communities. Um, five to six days, or five to six times a week. Okay. Our community. But here in the conservation now, the pushing, um, the pushing around two years now, we don't have pushing within the conservation. So most of activities the dog now is we are outside the conservation to support our communities. And also we support other areas or somebody who need the dogs. And as a free of charge, we don't, we don't pay anything. So if anybody need dogs, we support them. Okay, so I, and uh, and I'm guessing, John, that the dogs have really played an instrumental part into that. That the fact that Old Pechita hasn't had any rhinos poached in the last two and a half years. Yeah, um, I believe, and all our team believe, um, without the dog here, I think we can't do anything without the dogs. So this is a, a, very, a very important tool we have in the conservation. Because without the dogs, I think the portion will be more, more get more high. But the portion is get down here because we have dogs, and these dogs are doing a very important, a very important job within the conservation. And not only conservation, uh, and also um, house conservation, because our communities uh, most of the time they call for the dogs, and they know we have dogs here, and um, they use these dogs to support our, the communities. Okay. Um, yeah. In, interesting. So, what what is it in the communities then, John? That they that they do? Is it? Uh, you, you said you take them into the communities about five days a week. Uh, is that is that helping um, pre prevent crime in the communities as well as on the conservancy? Yes. Um, within our communities, we shall have a, 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 um, if somebody broke shops or stealing houses in the, in the new communities. And also, you can have um, cattle debt within the communities. So if anything happens, like uh, any crime or crime in communities, we send our team uh, of dogs and uh, our army team to support uh, the communities. Okay, and, and I know that all Petra to have, uh, you know, obviously have a great relationship with the communities and, you know, and, and that has certainly contributed as well to the, the success of the Conservancy and, and the you know the, the lack of poaching that we just spoke about so i i, I imagine that having the, the dogs work in the communities just strengthens that bond between the conservancy and therefore the wildlife and and the communities as well yeah yeah we, um, we have a very good relationship within our communities and um i think all projects support the communities in many activities um in, sorry. <laughs> he wants yeah. his toy back. <laughs> so, Pegeta support the communities in many activities, but the most um, activity or the most support the community appreciate on Pegeta is um, a canine unit because it's direct to somebody one by one to somebody. If somebody loses uh, cattle, the dogs go to support. If somebody broke somebody's house, still anything in the community, we send the, the dogs to support. Okay, I think, I mean, for me, it, it, you know, for, from a helping rhinos perspective as well, from what we see and, and the work we've done with El Pejita over the, over the years, you know, I think that that's really important as well. It, 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 you know, and a piece that people probably don't understand, we all understand about the anti-poaching bit, but that the role it plays in the wider relationship with communities, I think is, is not so well known. Um, so it's fascinating to, to hear about that as well. And is that all of the dogs then, John, that would go back out into the communities? We saw all of all of the pack earlier on. Do, do, they've all got a different role to play depending on, on what's needed. Yeah. Um, most now we use uh, tracking dogs because I think uh, most activities uh, occur in the communities uh, is crime. Like, um, even we support if somebody maybe like raping cases, uh, murder cases, we use the dogs and we use our team of uh, we use our tracking dogs. But still, when we, we take uh, tracking dogs, we we, we we have a drum 
as a backup or as a footing, because maybe somebody have a gun or a weapon in his home. When the attacking dogs go to somebody's home, home or a house, and now the attacking dogs finish their duties, we bring um, um, drum in for finding somebody uh, for finding of ammunition or or, 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 or or guns. So we usually have drum with the, uh, with the um, attacking dogs as a, a backup of the, the team. Yeah, I see. Interesting, very interesting, very fascinating, and and I'm pleased to say that we, we spoke earlier on that you can you can adopt drum. Um, we've we've just launched the adoption of drum, and, and already people on Facebook are telling us that they're going to they're going to go and adopt drum as a result of watching him today. So hopefully that will people people watching now are going to help help you know keep drum fed and safe and healthy um, as we as we go forward. Yeah, now I think we'll go to have another activity. Of, uh, okay, we're going to see Diego now, are we? Yeah, we can see Diego now. Okay, now we'll perfect. We'll, I'll hand back over to you and, and maybe, just, yeah, just explain what it is we're going to do. All right, so um, John is going to prepare there uh, uh, just to take uh, the magazine that was hidden there. And then we are going to head to the other park, and I think from there... Uh, we are going to do uh, the next activity. And uh, as you mentioned, Simon, I think it's really, uh, dogs have been very instrumental in terms of uh, helping uh, mitigate some of the effects that are happening there and building a good rapport with the community. I think the way these dogs go out there and help the community, uh, the, the community is able to comprehend that it is important to have such a conservation area like Opegita. So the dogs have really been so instrumental in that. We can also say that they have uh, contributed a lot uh, to the fact that for the last two years we've not uh, had a poaching incident. So we're heading back now to go and uh, speak Diego. Uh, and then he will show what he knows to do best and we will be led by John here. He is the expert in terms of uh, when it comes to these dogs. So uh, John now, what, what is this that you're holding? Um, I'm holding a hand slip. It's a hand slip we use for training of the attack dog. So, uh, what's your name? So I'm waiting my decoy to come. Um, I saw he's getting panicked because you know Diego is not a good dog. He's very heavy dog. <laughs> uh, so the the, the decoy is getting panicked now already. Um, imagine if the decoy, uh, this dog can bite in his hand. If imagine if it come towards your hand, it will be in a big trouble. So this is James. Hi James. Hi okay. James. is our decoy. Is our decoy. And also is our, our handler. He's a good man. So James. Uh, I'm James. I'm mm -hmm. I'm so talk James. louder. Introduce yourself. I'm James. Uh, dog handler at the decoy. Sorry, James is getting panic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> but I hope it'll be okay. Wish you good luck. Okay. okay. <laughs> Simon, I hope you still you can uh, all hear as well, and the uh, reception is good still. So, John, tell us a little bit about uh, Diego and uh, what he's about to do now, just in case for those people that are tuning in now and getting on this stream at this point of time so that they can be able to understand what is going on. So, first, Diego is a Belgian Malinois and he's a triple roll dog. So Diego is, he can track, search and attack. 
But now, just we'll show you uh, attack demo with Diego. I think I'll give him off leash again. Down. And if you see now, it's ready to go to attack. Body go. That's awesome. That's yeah. brilliant. James, we, we've had lots of people on social media. We was wishing the other James good luck before before Diego went <laughs> before Diego went for him. And I think it was really interesting to see how he got hold of the sleeve and really didn't want to let go, did he? Yeah, yeah. I just exactly what he will do when uh uh, in, in the presence, like holding a poacher, so that would be the same way it would happen in a in a real scenario. So, John, uh, you are saying something. So, once the the guy or the decoy finish the attack, he come against the dog because he's, he's part of our handling team uh, to make sure this is an activity. And I believe when the dog come to the decoy, it's an activity for him. But he imagine come to you uh, without have a sleep. Will, will drop your hand or your arm. So Diego is a very heavy dog. Um, 40 kgs, come to your arm. If you see his jaws, his mouth is very big head. So it's a very, very, if a posture come here, imagine I release him without a hand slip, he'll bring him down. And we train the dogs to come to the arm because maybe somebody is armed with a gun or a, a knife, so he can't, um, he, 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 once they come to you, you use a, a, a gun, you come to your arm and you break your leg, scream your dad. Good boy. 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 Yes, to go to the side of 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 the side the side of the side of the side of the side the side the side of the side of the side the side of 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 the side the side of the side of the side of the side the side of So James, that means that the uh, the other James has has to go through that again. Yeah, yeah. But this side now we will be seeing uh, Diego approaching us uh, from this angle. Okay, it's going to be fascinating to see him as he as he runs at top speed and 
<laughs> hitches yeah. on to the sleeve there. Sour. Not Nani? Okay. I said to Rukia. Okay. Great. Wow, James, you are a strong man. <laughs> 40 kgs off on your hand. <laughs> But so, uh, John, so when, he, uh, when Drum finished, he had a treat for him. So, mostly, what do you give uh, Diego? Diego just give him uh, a treat. Um, honestly, it's a treat for him. Uh -huh. And also, um, a lot of appreciate him, playing with him. When I uh, play with him, it's a treat. But we don't give him anything like a food, like Congo ball. But when he play with the honestly, it's a treat for him. Oh, okay. But what the dog needs is when you love your dog, play with the dog, have time with the dog, appreciate what we do to you, and trust the dog. The very important thing is to trust your dog. Whatever you do, especially here, what the dog do, um, trust your dog. Good boy. Good boy. Right, Simon, sir. I hope from your end, I don't know whether you have uh, any So that was very interesting. Just to, we, I, we, we missed a bit there, I think, James, in terms of what, what is the treat. So we saw the treat that Drum gets. What was the treat that Diego gets? We, we didn't pick that bit up so well. Yeah, so John just confirmed that uh, he just gets the ant sleep as a, as a treat. It doesn't give him any food or um, just as a treat. So he says... Uh, you have to play with them, give him the end sleep because it's already like a treat. So let him explain, expound on that a little bit. I hope you can hear as well. Just for a tackle dog, um, we give him, when he comes to the hand sleep, it's a treat for him. So because the dog like, especially Diego like to come to the, to the hand sleep. So when you give him a sleep or come to bite the sleep, it's once a treat for him. Yeah, and also it's a play for him. But this one is a treat for the dog. Okay, so that, that's all the, the treat. All the treat he needs is knowing that he's grabbing onto that sleeve and, and not letting go. <laughs> yeah, once he come to you and handle the sleeve, it's a treat for him. Okay, and and how long does it take one of your your team, John, to be able to have the confidence and the ability to put the sleeve on and and do that, or is that something you give to all the new members of the team? Mm, not everyone can um, agree. Um, to, to be a decoy. So very few, very few. Here now, I think we have James and also two uh, other two guys. So other teams, they don't like, um, especially Diego, because Diego is very heavy. And uh, imagine when he come or up, if he sees my sleep, if come up, what way the sleep is not, it will break your arm. So not everybody agree to be a decoy. Not everybody can do it. Okay, now I understand. So to be a decoy, must be to be more brave. Yes, I think I, I think I, I've I've actually done what done it once myself on a sleeve, but but I don't think I'd be brave enough to do it with Diego on the planes there. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. so we have have James is a brave man, and uh, sometimes he can panic because he know when the dog mess will break him down. So, so one other question that's come in, John, is uh, because we saw the, the two Jameses there. James, James Wender behind the camera and, and James the decoy. 
how 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 does Diego know which James to attack? Is it because he sees the sleeve? So sometimes it um, he saw the sleeve, but he, yeah, and also most of the time we bring him to the sleeve. But what this is why we James go behind him because when we when I give him the command to chase. This is somebody was in front of him, or somebody was running. You know, somebody, was, especially when you are running, they, they don't know you are the, the target. So this is why you put the decoy to the front, uh, because when you see the, the hand slip, it becomes the hand slip. But sometimes when the dog sees somebody, when I give you the command to chase anybody who was in front of him or running, will be, you know, he, he, she, she or he is the, the target. Okay, so that's how in the real world, if it's not a decoy, that's how that's how Diego knows. It's basically whoever's going to be running is is going to be the target for him. Yeah, because before I release the dog, I will give somebody um, a one, three times one. When he, he, he refuses to, 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 to stop, I will release the dog. So when I tell the dog to chase, you know, I show the target, now we go to the target. Yeah, he knows, uh, okay. And then when you want to... Get him off of the sleeve or, or the target. Do you, is there a command? I mean, he looked like he didn't really want to let go of that sleeve, John. But do you have a command that um, that, that sort of tells him to let go? Yes. Um, once I'm put him to go, just I tell him to chase. Mm -hmm. And then when I want him to be out of the sleeve, I tell him to, 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 to let the sleeve out. Okay. So that's uh, so he does have a command that he will recognize for that. Yes. Okay, I think that was fast. It was fascinating to see the. the, the I, I have to say thank you, John, because the demonstrations of both Drum and Diego really highlights for us the, the difference in the the different dogs and the different breeds that they the, the, the roles that the different breeds play. You know, from something from the Springer Spaniel and the tracking to the, the attack, the attack dog of Diego. You know, you can really see why you have different breeds for for the different tasks you need to do. Um, and then the third, the third breed, you have the bloodhounds, um, John. What, what typically would what what would they do different to what we've just seen from Drum and Diego? Um, do we use them for tracking of human being or somebody maybe are like pushing? We use uh, bloodhounds. They are very nice in tracking. So bloodhounds, they don't they don't search, they don't uh, attack, but very very nice dogs in, in tracking. So maybe another day, um, or if you have time. Um, we'll show you uh, uh, a attacking uh, demo. Yeah, that sounds like, thank you. I think that's a, a perfect thing for us to, to, to come back for another day is to, is to see how the, how the bloodhounds, you know, the role of the bloodhounds as well. And, and I'm sure people watching would be fascinated. Um, we get all sorts of questions coming in around the different dogs. And I, and I guess because it's dogs and people have dogs at home, they can really relate to perhaps their own pets at home and see the differences between the working dogs and, and, and the more domesticated dogs at home. So now I, I think we'll go back uh, to all of the dogs and you can say bye for the dog. Thank you very much. Um, okay, that would be perfect. All right, so Simon, uh, as you can see, John is here now together with his team. Uh, we can go a little bit closer, and then you can be able to see all the dogs uh, all in one turn. And uh, we also want to say thank you so much for always being there for us. I believe with the support that we are getting in terms of making sure that these dogs stay safe, uh, they are eating healthy, they are getting the training they, they need on an everyday basis for them to be effective in their different roles. Uh, we really are so grateful for that. And uh, I mean, having these dogs, having rangers on the ground guarantees the well-being of our rhinos, but not only our rhinos, but the entire ecosystem. So we really appreciate uh, those people that are adopting the dogs, 
those people that are donating towards Opejita Conservancy to make sure that we continue uh, protecting these animals. We are truly grateful for that. So we'll, uh, maybe I don't know whether you have the final question, uh, Simon, before we sign off together with the team. No, I think, thank you, James. I, I think it's been, been a fascinating um, 45 minutes just meeting the dogs, seeing them. Um, I think there's, there's been lots of interest. I would also just like to reiterate you know, your thanks to all of our supporters uh, who, who have adopted, who hopefully w will adopt going forward. As you rightly say, it makes a, a big difference in terms of you know, being able to feed the dogs, being able to care for them, keeping them safe, and, and therefore keeping our rhinos safe as well because of them them being there so I, I would reiterate just just those thanks as well um and now i think let's 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 say farewell to the to the dogs and and you know thank all the dogs for i know it's getting late there what is it now it's uh, quarter past uh quarter past six there so the light is, is beginning to get dark and i'm sure they're they're ready for their dinner now yeah definitely yeah so we will say goodbye to our dogs uh john maybe you can see the final which dog is which uh before we end uh we finish the session. Again, now we are finishing, and uh, thank you very much uh, for joining Antipoishik K9 units. We are now uh, um, Malaika, a drum. We have seen him in an active demo, but I think the next time we will use attacking dogs. Uh, here we have um, Oscar, we are attacking. We see Diego in a real activity. Uh, Otis. The blood arm, um, Stacy, the blood arm attacking, and we have the mum here of the two blood arms. We have um, Malaika and Oscar, his name is Scott. So he's calm, he's the mum of the good dogs. So thank you very much for joining anti Post Unit and for the support we give the team and the dog. So thank you very much. Right, so from us and the whole team, Simon. We really want to say thank you so much. Thank you very much, James. And, and thank you again, John, and, and all of your team. Uh, thank you again for, for taking the time out today to, to give us the demonstrations and, and letting people from all around the world um, have the opportunity to, to meet your dogs. And uh, hopefully some of us will be able to see you there in person again soon. And, and we'll, if not, we'll, we'll certainly be seeing you again online. So thank, thanks very much, and we'll, we'll let you take the dogs back to their back to their kennels. Right. Thank you so much from our side. So once again, just thank you to everybody. Uh, don't forget that you can adopt the dogs. I hope you enjoyed uh, those demonstrations from the team at Old Pegeta. Uh, I, I certainly found it fascinating to see the contrast between the, the different breeds. Um, so please. Please do, uh, if you can, you know, take the opportunity to adopt them. They, they make great Christmas presents as well. Uh, and you, you know that you'll be able to, uh, to be doing good at the same time and, and helping, helping the dogs and also therefore helping, helping the rhinos keep safe and helping old Pegeta continue um, with, without having any poaching incidents. Um, so thank you very much. Please do stay tuned for our next live broadcast. Uh, we will be posting details across social media uh, of exactly when that is. Uh, we have a number of other live events coming up, uh, various different types of events. So uh, once again, thank you all for your support and um, I'll see you next time.